Well, hello Thrivers. Welcome to another day at Thrive Bible Devotions. Uh, it is, as I mention all the time, it is our goal to really um, help us all to be in the habit of being in God's Word every single day. It is the Word of God that changes our lives uh, through the through the Holy Spirit, and, and and it's just, it's so amazing, right? The Bible says the Word of God is quick, alive, right, and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even the two dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It, it is, it reveals who we are. Um, you know, the, the writer said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Um, Paul said to Timothy, right, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. I mean, this is the this is the cornerstone of all that we we believe. And I'm so glad that God gave us His Word. It is, oh man, and I, I love it. And I hope, and I, my prayer is that as we do this every day, um, however often you join us, um, I, I my prayer is that you grow to love the Word of God. That I grow to love the Word of God more and more. Um, and that it just becomes central to who we are and, as Christians. Uh, today we're going to be in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, we're going to read the last couple verses of, um, of chapter 2, uh, verses 16 and 17, and we'll talk about that. And as we get started, let's just have a quick uh, word of prayer. Uh, Father, we come to you today humble, Lord, knowing that it is only through you that, that um, we have life, Lord, and that, and that you've died for us to give us life and to to give it more abundantly. And Father, I pray that as we dive into your word today, Lord, that you'll just help us to know you more and to be more like you as, as a result. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have a Bible, open it up. If you don't, you can read it on the screen. But um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, uh, the text says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort, and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. We're stopping there today. It's a short passage. Hopefully it's a short short video. Um, it just felt like a good um, uh, a good little section to, to talk about. And, and, um, and let's look at it a bit, right? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing here is, right, God has given us eternal comfort and good hope. And that to me is just so amazing. Uh, life is hard. Uh, you know, there's so much that happens that is difficult, whether that's illnesses or relationships that are having problems, right? Um, whether it's, you know, jobs and work that is that is difficult or frustrating or or just, you know, hard, I mean, annoying to do all day in, in and out. You know, whether it's raising kids and trying to, uh, you know, make the right decisions and act appropriately, whether it's trying to learn how to love your spouse more, um, or, you know, and how to show love with others. Um, every day our lives are, you know, it's difficult to, to navigate through it all. And if, if, you know, if you're the person that has it all figured out, man, come talk to me. I need to know more. But I don't think any of us do. I sure don't have it all figured out. But what I know is that the more I submit to the Spirit, the more I, I live my life for God, the better things are. But it's, but the, the truth then comes down to, right, is even in the midst of how difficult all of this is, no matter in the midst of how difficult life can be, God loves us. God then gives us eternal comfort and has given us good hope, right? A hope and assurance of what is to come. Um, and it's through grace. All that is through grace. Uh, you know, and you say, what is grace? You know, and, and really grace is uh, probably the most basic definition is just getting what we don't deserve, right? I mean, getting, you know, it's, it's being given. It's lavished upon you. It's, it's something you don't deserve to have. Example, all right? Never mind. I was just saying, I have a child who doesn't deserve to have all the things we give him all the time. You know, and you, never mind, but he's, he's so awesome. I love him anyway. I don't mean that. Um, although it's true though, right? And it's the same with us, right? I don't deserve to have eternal life. I don't deserve to have Jesus die for me. I know how truly wretched and miserable and awful I am. I know I don't deserve that. You know, uh, I have a great wife. I don't deserve a wife as great as, as, as I have. Uh, she is so loving and so caring. She, you know, uh, 
Um, she's going to listen to this video, so I don't want to, never mind. I don't want to puff her up too much. But you get the picture, right? There's just so many things in our lives we don't deserve. And so, so in God's grace, he gives us so much more. In God's grace, he loves us, right? We don't deserve that love, but he loves us and he pours it out upon us. And it's amazing and awesome. Um, you know, so much so that he, he, um, he then gives us so many other things, right? Even, you know, adoption as sons of God, um, giving us the Holy Spirit to indwell us. But in this text, right, it says he gives us great, I'm sorry, eternal comfort, right? That's that, that's that encouraging, that, that encourager next to us, the, the, you know, that urging. As a matter of fact, that word is really interesting because it's, uh, it, it does, it has to do with, with someone right next to, to you who is urging and, 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 and helping you and, 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 you know, speaking into your, into your life. And that's what we have in God, right? Right next to us, inside of us, really the spirit of God dwells in us, um, doing that for us. And then good hope. Man, we have an awesome hope, right? We have an awesome assurance that Jesus Christ is coming again and that we will be with him and that the world will be made new and sin will be you know, rid of completely. That is, that is truly awesome. And I can't wait for that. It's exciting and, and, and amazing. And so we have that hope. Um, and, and so here in, in, in our passage, right, he says, now may the, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave eternal life and car, gave, gave eternal comfort and good hope through grace, may he comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. And, and this is an interesting thing here. As I was looking at this, I was, I was wondering, hey, you know, so Paul's saying may, you know, may God do this. And is, it, is he kind of wishing on us? Is he you know, pronouncing a blessing? What is this? And as I looked at the text, and I decided to get you know into the nitty gritty of the text and really look at it, that word "may" is actually part of the word "comfort" and part of the word "establish." Um, it's it's really God, right? Um, is going to do this? No, is doing? Is comforting? Is establishing? And, and so, uh, and they just put that they put that part and use "may" to, to emphasize that what God's doing. In the beginning of, of chapter verse sixteen, when when in reality that word is actually part of wor- the the two words in ch- verse seventeen, comfort and, and establishing, and so it's not that he might or you know, may you know I'm not mother may I right yes you may no it's he's going to do this or that he's doing this, um, and that's that's pretty awesome, and so what is he doing? Well, he's first of all he's comforting us right. Um, it said may. Um, God, right? Comfort your hearts. Comfort your hearts. And so again, that idea, that, that word comfort, is the idea of someone next to you urging and encouraging. The exact same word is used in Matthew. Matthew 26, verse 53. Let me read that verse for you real quick. Matthew 26, verse 53. It says here, Jesus is talking, right? And he says, Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more, than 12 legions of angels. The word is the word appeal here, right? Jesus is saying, hey, do you think that I cannot comfort my father, appeal to my father, speak to my father, it's it's encourage my father to do something, right? Don't you think that I could do that, right? That I could speak that? Um, it, it's translated comfort here, but it's that same word. And it's that word that he's urging. He's he's prop, he's pushing us forward. He's, you know, with his words, he's, 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 Helping us to, to, to go forth and to do what he'd have us to do. Um, it is so much more than just comforting. So much more than, you know, giving the big old hug and saying, I love you. It, it's standing next to you and, and, and speaking the words into you that you need uh, for action, for, for life. Um, so it's an appeal. It's, a, it's that. And he's next to us doing that in our lives. And then, you know, so he's, he's comforting us, right, or urging us or, or appealing to us right? Um, and he's establishing us. And that word establish, man, that is the idea of setting firm, right? It's, it, it has the idea of, of solidly planting something that's not going to move, right? It's that support. It's to fix firmly. And, and that is, that is what he, he's, he was, he is planting you. He is setting you down so that you can stand, right? So that you can stand firm and hold, and that's what God is doing. And he's doing these things, right? Now listen to this. He's doing this in every good work and word. And I want to be clear. This is not your work and your words. A lot of people will look at that and immediately think, oh, oh man, 
in my good works and my words. Oh my gosh, it's so hard because I find myself failing so much and I'm not doing the things that I should do. I'm not, my works are terrible and my words, oh my goodness, have you just heard me the way I, the way I, you know, speak when I'm tired and cranky, you know, I mean, the, even my anger. No, 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 don't worry about that. Both of these things are from God, right? It's not your work and words, it's God's. How great is that? I mean, when you think about it, guys, how great is this? I mean, how depressing it is if, if, if this was up to us. If it was up to us, if it had to be with our words and our, and our works, right? How depressing that would be. I mean, man, it'd be awful. It'd be, it'd be like hopeless. It'd be like, oh, man, really? I mean, man, it's up to us to have these, these good works and words. Nah, man, it's God. God comforts. God establishes it. He does it for us and with us. It is so relieving. It is like a weight off my shoulders when I realize. And when I say realize, when I, I mean, when it becomes real in my life, right, that God is the one who is comforting and, and establishing us through his works, through his words. God is at work in your life and God is giving you the words of life. And, and through these things, guys, he is there next to you comforting you and and establishing you and, and setting your feet solid it is through jesus christ and that is to me that is awesome and exciting it is so incredibly cool and and we get to be we get to receive that and that's the grace of god in our lives uh, receiving these these things that we we don't if salvation was all we received that'd be more than enough but god does so much more so much more Guys, I hope, I hope you're encouraged by this. I, I know I am. Uh, I get so encouraged by the Word of God, and it is, it is so awesome and, and just gets me going for the day. And I hope you'll be encouraged. I hope that you'll realize how firmly God is planting you, especially as you are in His Word and realizing the works that He is doing in your life. God bless you guys. Let's, let's come back tomorrow as we begin uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I love you guys. I look forward to tomorrow. God bless you guys.